We're gonna take our 308 shorty rifle in a completely different direction in this video with the new UD3 chassis from Ultradive. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. This is shorty. You've seen shorty in quite a few stories here on the channel. This is the whole motivation was compact 308 gun, right? Something with a fast twist barrel. It's got a one in eight and a half. I put a poll out there. I think 4,000 people voted, whether it be 16, 18, or 20 inch barrel length. You guys said 16, so I made it 16.001 inches in length, if you catch my drift. Uh, we've got the Silencer Central Backcountry Suppressor that was featured in that story. Loophole Mark V HD 2 to 10. This is totally awesome setup. We've also got a very compact Hunter Mag from Hawkins Precision. But what if you want something that's chassis based? That's where this story comes in. Now as a, as a kind of a backgrounder, I did a very detailed build with the Ultradyne UD7, which is the longest chassis that Ultradyne makes. Uh, you're gonna wanna check that out. We did full custom Cerakote, we put together 6GT, took it out shooting, lots of really fun stuff. This time, I wanted to keep it more simple. With the UD7 build, I had weight kits on there, the spigot to extend the Arca rail. You know, we had really kind of deluxe buttstock, deluxe grip, it was kind of an elaborate build. This is all about compact and simple. This is an affordable chassis, and we're gonna put together a rifle that's gonna be really like purpose-built for truck gun type duty, that sort of thing, maybe casual hunting, and overall just a whole lot of fun, right? And on a relatively tight budget. So this is the UD3. Let's take a look at what we've got here. So the UD3 has three M-lock slots on each side. There's a UD5 version that has five M-lock slots and the UD7 has seven on each side. So three different lengths, a bunch of different Cerakote colors that you can choose from. I got my UD7 Special from Ultradyne in the white, of course, and I did the full custom Cerakote. This time we've got this really attractive green. We've got an adjustable height mag catch, AICS magazine interoperability. We can use any AR-15 style grip with the UD series chassis and any mil spec AR-15 or AR-10 style buttstock. So what I decided to put together was a very much just keep it simple build. I've got a collapsible six position buttstock that I think was from one of my AR-15s. I've got a Hogue rubber over molded grip. I've got a Magpul uh, polymer AICS 10 round 308 mag. So this is gonna just keep things way down in size. We've got a very short barrel, not SBR, just above SBR, a short suppressor. This should make for a really good compact build. So also included are the action screws. Uh, we've got that little Allen set screw that goes up here. Uh, if we wanna keep that from rotating on this little channel right here. So I think we'll go ahead and employ that. And then we've also got uh, a couple Allen keys there. For the, for the different uh, hardware, like the adjustable height mag catch. So when you look at the overall features and functionality, this has got everything I'm looking for. AICS, AR-15 buttstock and grip compatibility, V-block bedding for the Remington 700 short action with the right bolt. It's also available with left, also available in long action. We've got M-lock, we've got Arca rails, we've got Dynalock, which is, we've got a whole video on that as well, actually. Uh, our uh, Ultradyne Carbon Tripod and Orbit Ball Head video, you're gonna wanna check that out. That thing is totally cool. And it works with this Dynalock, which is designed to keep your Arca accessories locked firmly. They're not gonna slide uh, at under recoil or anything like that. We could extend this with the spigot and have an extended Arca rail, which actually would be a pretty cool configuration, but this is just bare bones, keeping it simp simple, keeping it lightweight, keeping it compact. We've also got a couple decals, it looks like, and a catalog QR code card there. Really nice packaging. The foam has been glued in place and everything. Okay, so that's a little bit about the UD3. Next, we're gonna get it going on taking the barreled action 
and all the parts and putting this rifle together. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna install the butt stock first, then we'll do the grip, uh, then we'll take the barrel action from the other stock and kind of put everything together. So this is the orange vise with area 419 jaws. That means that I can clamp right to my Arca rail, which is uh, pretty awesome. Sometimes it's just about holding things. Other than times it's about, wow, this can really secure this with some real force, you know? And then I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get this kind of indexed and I'll, I'll put the set screw in to kind of just retain that position if that makes sense. Get that tightened down. This set screw goes in right here at the bottom. Okay, I can kind of hear that compress the hard coat. Cool, that should be pretty good. Like how compact that that can get. Okay, now we take our grip screw. This is the correct Allen type rather than the straight slot screwdriver type. <laughs> much, much easier to deal with. Let's go ahead and screw that in. Wow, already things are looking quite different. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna get the barreled action out. And then we're gonna install the barreled action here. And shorty, looks like that's gonna fit pretty good. Again, we've got three sixteenths action screws here, pretty standard stuff. Three sixteenths is the Allen key size, that is. <laughs> Tighten it till it tightens down, then loosen it just a little bit so we can get these kind of tightened down together. Okay, pretty straightforward. I usually give the front action screw just a little bit more torque compared to the rear. Hey, look at that, huh? That looks pretty cool. Okay, so magazine is kind of the last step. I like what I'm seeing here. This is pretty cool. Got a nice compact bipod here as well. Check that out. Okay, so here we go. And we can, we can reduce the overall form factor here. That is a really nice, compact, non-SBR 308 for the truck or for whatever. Looks like we're clear here. Yeah, that's gonna be, it's gonna be really, oh yeah, nice. So, a lot of fun things that we can do with 308 as well. And I think kind of the next thing is gonna be to take this out and do some shooting with it. Okay guys, I took 
Shorty in its new configuration out and did a bunch of shooting and that was actually related to this stuff here. I did a video on 308 case processing with the CP2000 and DA3000 from Dylan and then we also did some loading on the RL550C. Two different loads we were looking at here, 143 grain military pull down tracer loads, really, really fun stuff. And then using Barry's 220 grain, 300 blackout bullets, we did subsonic 308. And that used Trail Boss, which is an interesting powder, little donut shaped granules. Really, really good stuff and a really fun way to try out Shorty in this new chassis configuration. Love the compact form factor, totally love the Mark V HD 2 to 10 by Leupold. And the Silencer Central Backcountry did a, ex, an excellent job at reducing sound level to almost nothing for the subsonic loads. Very distinctly was able to hear the ping of the steel for, for each of those shots. So if you're looking to build a compact truck gun, this would be a great formula. And I love Ultradyne's UD3 chassis. This is an affordable package and you can kind of make it into what you want it to be. We used a regular old AR-15 buttstock that's collapsible that we had rolling around in the shop. Same thing with the Hogue uh, rubber over molded grip, you know? And uh, you can use Ultradyne parts as well. They have their own set of grips. They have a, a fully adjustable buttstock. You're gonna to wanna to check out our UD7 video to see those parts in action. And also don't forget there's the UD5, which sits in between those two different lengths. Three M-lock slots for the UD3, seven for the UD7, and five for the UD5. So maybe our next project with Ultradyne chassis will be a UD5. Uh, you gotta let us know, drop a comment if you would like to see that and if you have any ideas for what we would do with that. Okay, my question for you is, have you checked out Ultradyne's new chassis, the UD3, the UD5, and the UD7? What do you think of Dynalock? Have you had a chance to see it? Have you had a chance to use it? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. I think I'm gonna load some more ammo here and go and do some more shooting. So that concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.